there is, in fact, one indicator to look at that above all else will help predict a market crash. There's still so much uncertainty in the market out there. No one seems to know what direction we're headed. But the number one indicator that I look at more than anything else to help determine where we're going to be going in the next 6 to 12 months is actually foreclosures. Now, on the surface, it does seem pretty simple, but in reality, the best indicators in the world are the simplest ones. So we're going to look at the correlation between foreclosures and price and why it's the number one indicator when it comes to determining what the market is going to be doing. And those of you that are investors or just wanting to buy a foreclosure to get a better deal, stick with me because I'm going to show you some tactics and strategies that you can use to help buy a foreclosure. I'm Alex Saldani, a Denver real estate agent, investor, house flipper, and I've worked on literally hundreds of transactions since 2010. And on this channel, I really try to answer all those deep questions you investors, homeowners, home buyers have. And the more likes I get on this video, the more flowers I'm going to buy my wife. The foreclosure numbers are the best tangible number that I've come across that will tell me which direction the market might be heading. But what makes it such a strong indicator is how the foreclosure process works and the amount of time that it takes for a foreclosure to kick in. So it's always said that the housing market lags the stock market, right? So why is that? Well, part of the reason is because foreclosures take such a huge amount of time to actually happen. So if you look at this chart here, this goes over the foreclosure process. So you stop paying and that's technically day one. Let's say your bill is due on January 1st, you don't pay it. You can go for 45 to 60 plus days before the bank even sends you a demand letter that says, hey, you owe money. And then the fastest legally that a bank can put you into the foreclosure process is after having not paid for 90 days. After three months, the bank files the foreclosure on the house they have to make it public knowledge, so they have to post it in a newspaper. And then over the next 120 to about 150 days, the foreclosure process is actually happening. So you're not even in foreclosure for the first 90 days. And then the next 90 days approximately is the process of the bank to take repossession of the house if, in fact, that's what they want to do. So on average, six months is even a really fast time frame for a foreclosure to kick in, which as far as an indicator is concerned, so day one, let's say we see a spike in foreclosures. Our market is not going to reflect that for an additional six months because those properties aren't going to come for sale on average for about six months. And while preparing for this video, I dug into a lot of statistics, as I always do, and this was absolutely amazing. I didn't know this, but this is a chart here of the average days to complete the foreclosure process. And I know the numbers are a little bit small, but today in the entire United States, the average time to complete a foreclosure from the time it gets filed, so about three months after payments have stopped, until either the bank takes possession of the house or the property is sold is over 800 days today, which absolutely blew my mind. And even if we look back here in 07, 08, 09, it was still taking well over 200 days to complete that process. But over time, it's just taken even more. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, to be honest with you, but it could be due to the fact that since the 08 crash, equity has just been going up, up, and away. And so maybe people are able to renegotiate or they're able to do loan modifications, which helps them stay in the house for longer. And it just makes the process that much longer with the banks. I really honestly don't know, but it's a lot longer than I would have thought. And so if it's taken two and a half to three years to actually complete the foreclosure process, that gives us a whole lot of time to prepare. So we can start seeing if the numbers start ramping up, we know we've got at least six months before prices really might start adjusting, investors start getting a little shaky, we start having landlords sell their properties because people aren't paying rent on time, which will then give us more inventory out of the market, more inventories on the market, the more prices are going to be squeezed. Now, what we're looking at here is a chart of the amount of foreclosure starts in the entire United States. And you can see in 06, the numbers really started to ramp up and we were having about 100 to 150,000 foreclosure starts 
every single quarter. And I think back then there were about 110,000 U.S. households. So that was about 1% every quarter that was going into foreclosure. And it really just took off from 06. And we peaked out in about 08, 09. But we were getting about 500,000 foreclosure starts per quarter. And now this chart is showing us what the average price of the U.S. home was starting back in 2000. And those gray little sections, those are technically our recession years. And so what we can see here is even though the foreclosures started to ramp up in 2006, prices just kind of went flat for a couple of years there. And by the middle of 2008, we were in full crash mode. And I know on average, home prices only adjusted about 20, 25%, but there were so many areas that got hit with 50% price adjustments across the board. And then prices really didn't start leveling out until about 2010. We lagged the foreclosure market by easily a year to a year and a half. And what we're looking at here is the Dow Jones. So to relate housing prices, prices to what the stock market does. The Dow Jones peaked in October of 2007 and since then dropped down about 50% and took over a year to get there before it started rebounding where housing prices really didn't start dropping until the summer of 2008, so a little bit over six months. And in our most recent adjustment, the peak of the Dow was actually January 1st of 2022, where the peak of real estate was the middle of April 2022, at least here in Denver and other parts of the country is more like May or June. So you you can see there's that about six month delay from what the stock market is doing to when real estate prices start making their move. And for a little bit of perspective here, for those of you in Denver to know exactly what the Denver metro area was doing, prior to 07 and 08, the entire Denver metro area would have about three to 4,000 homes every single year go into the foreclosure process. Not a terribly high number. We have a lot of white collar jobs here. Denver in general holds up pretty well during recessions. But in 07, 08, we had over 30,000 homes a year go into foreclosure. And then what I just did is I pulled up the last quarter of data because all this data is so far behind. But I wanted to see what the foreclosure numbers looked like in the Denver metro area for quarter four of 2022. And you can see there was only 704 homes that went into foreclosure during the fourth quarter. That's not very many. And in fact, that's below the average of what it was prior to the 0708 crash. And if we go back to the nationwide graph of how many homes go into foreclosure, you can see prior to the pandemic, we had 80 to 100,000 homes every single quarter that would go into foreclosure. And now, of course, during the pandemic, there was the moratorium. There were virtually zero foreclosures happening. And everybody expected this huge spike of foreclosures, including myself. But what we're seeing here is that it actually didn't happen. And we are currently below pre-pandemic levels of the amount of homes that have gone into foreclosure. So what does this all mean? Well, it still means that people are able to pay their bills, people are able to pay their mortgage, and there's not a bunch of foreclosures out there because people are not in distress. And I know we want to hear about the narrative from all the media out there about job losses, but a lot of those job losses have come from the high-level white-collar jobs. But take construction, for example, here in Denver. You can get a job virtually at any construction company you want with a one phone call. It's literally that easy at 20 to 25 bucks an hour, even without any experience. And as long as people can keep paying rent, you're not going to have distressed landlords wanting to sell their property, keeping the inventory levels down. As long as people can make their mortgage payments, we're not going to see a surplus of inventory. So I feel like we're in this happy land of being a little bit balanced where it's easier for buyers to buy because interest rates have doubled over the last six months. And yet, as a seller, you can still get a great price for your home. But yeah, you're going to have to negotiate a bit more, give on inspection items, and potentially give up seller concessions. But it actually is a good time to buy, and it actually is a good time to sell, which we don't have many windows like this historically in real estate. I look at and review the foreclosure numbers every single week, and if we start seeing a spike in activity there in the foreclosure market, I'll be the first one to let you know because we might be in for a bit of a storm if that does indeed happen. But those of you out there who are investors or just home buyers that are always looking for a deal, I know everyone resorts to buying foreclosures because that's where they think the best deals are to be had. Well, how do you position yourselves to buy a foreclosure in the event that we get a flood of inventory coming in? So the first thing you're going to want to do is have a service that actually gives you the foreclosure data. Now, you can go to the courthouse or stuff like that, but I don't actually know anybody who's ever done that. There's services like Renav out there 
and I think even foreclosure.com, and you can see what houses have started the foreclosure process. Now, from here, it's not like you can just go to the bank and say, hey, I want to offer you something for this property. It doesn't actually work like that. Most people, in fact, I don't believe know how to actually buy a foreclosure, but the process is the same as buying any other house. And in this case, you're buying it directly from the homeowner because until the house is foreclosed on and it either becomes bank owned or sells at the auction, now in those two scenarios, you have a different seller. But until those dates, it's still owned by the person that's on the title. So you have to get this list. And in our case right now, there's less than a thousand on in the Denver metro area, and you have to reach out to them somehow, whether that's sending them letters, door knocking, but it's not just as easy as, hey, I want to go buy a foreclosure. That process doesn't exist. They could list on the MLS and it could be listed as a foreclosure, but the purpose of listing on the MLS is to get as much as possible for the home. So if tens of thousands of people are looking at the house, are you really getting that good of a deal or are you just able to buy it at market value? And the answer is B, you're able to just buy it at market value. So really you've got to get in front of people before they decide to sell. And then you're competing with every other We Buy Houses company out there, which spend massive amounts of money every single month to get in front of people wanting to sell. Don't kid yourself thinking that you can send out 500 postcards and buy yourself a foreclosure. It's not that easy. Trust me, we've done it. And the numbers look more like one in every 15,000 postcards to be able to get a deal. So my number one tip, if you do want to try to buy a foreclosure, is to actually hunt for short sales that are on the market. And from here, it's purely just a numbers game. But this is a map currently of all the short sales in Denver, and there's seven currently, and they're all under contract. But if you track the amount of short sales through a feed through let's say an agent, it'll start being a good indicator because typically the short sales that come up are 95% of the time going to be in foreclosure. And then it's just a numbers game. You can throw out multiple offers out there and it's a waiting game. It might take three to six months to actually get it. You have to negotiate with the bank. It's a long, arduous process, but there are houses that are available for sale where if you get just a foreclosure list of a thousand homes, getting in front of people can be really difficult and they're already going through a challenging time. So the likelihood is even lower that you're going to be able to build up a relationship where they look to you as the person to buy their house. But there's still tons of opportunity there and I know people daily who work on the foreclosure list to try to acquire properties and it works. But you know what? Everything works if you work it. And believe it or not, I still do think it's a great time to buy right now. And it's costing about 50% less in cash to buy today than it did a year ago. And I'm going to invite you to watch this video on why now is in fact a great time to buy a home. And until the next time, happy housing.